without borders, you don't have a country, and, and the left doesn't want uh, national divisions. It wants uh, uh, the international bodies to, to, uh, to rule the world. Uh, this is not a, a conspiracy theory. It, they say it. They, they find nationalism, any, any belief in the importance of one's nation, to be equatable to fascism. So it, it, that is part of the battle. What you just heard was Dennis Prager's opinion on what he calls the moral battle for America. Now, Dennis Prager is a man with many opinions, most of which I disagree with, so I'm going to respond to them and I'm going to break them down for you, so stick around. Whether it is of, of the non-vaccinated who, who are the pariahs of America, as I have not seen in my lifetime, any pariah group like, uh, like this. During the AIDS crisis, can you imagine if, if gay men and intravenous drug users, who, 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 who were the vast majority of people with AIDS, had they been uh, pariahs the way the, the non-vaccinated are? But it would have been inconceivable, and it should have been inconceivable. They should not have been made pariahs. Mm. But, uh, but yeah. this is well, culture. This is okay. You can make the non-vaccinated. Can you imagine if the gays and those who suffered from AIDS were seen as pariahs in the 80s? Except they were. People were fired from their jobs. People were evicted from their homes. People were disowned by their family members. They couldn't get treated at hospitals. I mean, they were called sinners and they were told that they deserved what they got for being gay. And there was and is still to this day no vaccine for AIDS. And I guarantee you, that if there had been a vaccine for AIDS, people would have been jumping on it faster than you can imagine. You can't compare people who refuse to get a vaccine for a deadly virus to people who had no choice and no option and no vaccine. Now I wanna move on to our final opinion, so let's take a listen to see what Dennis Prager had to say in this next clip. I ask people a very simple question, and I did this on my radio show, my great experiment, as I call it, my human laboratory. If you don't get your wisdom and your values from the Bible, tell me what book you get it from. And it was fascinating. The, 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 the answers were, were, were either just sad or, or non-existent. This was the, great, the greatest single revelation I had in my life. And that is that the most secular institutions in the, in the, in the country, the universities, are the least wise. There is more foolishness in the most secular institutions, and therefore I concluded that the, the proverb is accurate. Wisdom begins with fear of God. If there, there's, when there's no Bible, there's no wisdom. If we're going with Dennis Prager's definition of wisdom, not only does this discount anyone who's not a Christian, obviously, but I'd say it also discounts most Christians, as in my experience, most Christians I know have never actually read the Bible. I mean, have you ever tried to read the Bible? It is a very difficult read. Most people, even Christians, have not read it. So I guess if you're a Christian and you haven't read the Bible, sorry, you're not wise. But even that definition is ridiculous. The definition of wisdom is learning over time and through experience. You don't have to get wisdom through a book. You can. You can read many, many books and gain wisdom that way, but you can't just learn wisdom like math through a book. It is something that you accrue over time and experience. So I now have for you another female teacher. They dominate academia increasingly, and it is part of the reason for its deterioration. I know it sounds misogynist, but only to an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Dennis Prager. Um, has some beef with some of his former teachers because you only be an idiot if you don't believe that these female teachers are destroying education. Uh, that's not all. Uh, the, the, he has more to say about them because uh, he's not an idiot. Watch this. Am I claiming all women are awful teachers? Of course not. But if 95% of the librarians, for example, or 85% of the kindergarten teachers are female and the libraries are increasingly featuring uh, trans uh, story hours, then uh, what is it? Uh, what's the term for the uh, story hour? Not trans. Um, when the, yeah, drag queen, that's right, drag queen. 
a lot of terms that you have to master here, then it, it is not foolish, let alone misogynistic. It's not foolish, let alone misogynistic. Who can listen to this guy? Jesus, I know you guys talked to him in an interview. I, I don't know how you did that either. But apparently uh, women are ruining our educational system. In fact, librarians that set up these whole uh, drag uh, uh, reading hours, and he had to come up with those very detailed, tough terms that you have to master, apparently, uh, in order to talk about what is this happening, because he understands how these things work. He understands how events are put together. He understands when uh, they invite folks to do these. It's just this lone librarian who sits in there and she just lords over everyone, and she slams her fist on the desk and says, "Be quiet and listen to the drag reading hour." That's the picture that's in these folks' head. I'm not even sure if that's in his head. He just wants to make his uh, followers and listeners actually believe this nonsense. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I don't know if he's senile or high, uh, but there was a lot of like, uh, dude, with the <laughs> squinting of the <laughs> eyes and not remembering things. Is there some chance Prager's vaping? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but. And, it was, and, and then he never actually, I watched the whole thing, he never actually got back to his point about why women teachers are so bad. He just lost track of it and uh, started listing women in his life. It was just weird. Uh, and you got a twofer there because he's uh, putting in his the war on teachers, which Republicans are doing, and an attack on women. That, so the Republican viewers must have loved it. Um, so I have uh, more to break down his argument, but first, Sharon. <laughs> If he's not high, he should be. Okay, have a little fun, <laughs> loosen up. Okay, I think that you know this whole thing about you know drag story. That's how you get people to the library. Expand your horizon, <laughs> enjoy everyone. It, this guy is ridiculous, and the fact that it's all we, we did something else to you now. It's like this is the second time I've had to say this about a story today. But who hurt you? Who hurt you? That's what we really should be talking about here. Yeah. I remember a librarian I had in elementary school Aww. got me, no, no, it's not a good story. She got my uh. ass beat by mm. my dad. Because <laughs> mm. you're gonna be shocked to find out that I was speaking out and too loud in library oh. class. Okay, I know, blown away by it, okay. So she said I'd do a 100 word essay apologizing. So I wrote, I am very 96 times, sorry, okay. And then she did something smart. Uh, she then mailed that to my dad and said, this is what your wise ass son did when I was trying to punish him. And he's like, "Oh, cut, where's cut me back? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And it was one of the three times I got beat. Um, okay. Now, because of that, because of that, I've always hated librarians. <laughs> no, first of all, I was wrong, okay? And second of all, let, as Sharon's point, let your past trauma go when we're mm -hmm. trying to make policy for the whole country, okay? Yeah. So um, these guys, look, just so you're clear why they keep attacking teachers. You've now seen it thousands of times, right? Um, there's a bunch of twofers in there, but primarily because the teachers unions mainly support Democrats. And so they're trying to destroy teachers so they can destroy the campaign contributions the teachers unions are giving to Democrats. Secondly, propaganda. They hate that they're teaching actual history in history class of the history of America. Yes, including racism, right? And they hate that gay people exist, so they don't want teachers to acknowledge them. And, and they think that, hey, if you're not just like us, you're the others and teachers should teach people to hate you like we've been teaching our kids all the whole time. Remember everybody, if they don't look like you, you should hate them. They're inferior to you, they shouldn't have the same rights. They shouldn't be able to love anyone they want. They shouldn't be able to marry anyone they want, etc., etc. Why won't they teach hate, uh, crabby old men like uh, Dennis Prager say. So that's why they attack on teachers and the attack on women teachers in specific. It's hard to rebut because he never explained why. He just seemed to say like, well, a lot of them are chicks, you know, and we hate the teachers. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm willing to toss out a hypothesis here. Women are way too nice. They're way too kind. They uh, think about other folks and they're saying, hey, you know what? Maybe we should have a, a drag reading hour because why not let's be nice? Uh, it's odd because obviously throughout history, we've known that majority of, of teachers are women, um, but I guess his thought process is now we should replace him with many men 
who are maybe harsher, come down hard on folks, don't have any kind of idea of relating to someone else and allowing them to exist. I'm not sure if that's what he thinks the answer is and they're destroying academia. What's happening to the folks that are not learning? What's happening in classrooms now? Are they suddenly not teaching them anything anymore? It's a lot of cartoonish scenarios that you have to put forward to people and earlier in the show, we talked about one of the January 6th rioters who then blamed Donald Trump for brainwashing him into believing into doing something. Is that the approach? Because you know Donald Trump isn't a woman, so therefore he's hardcore and he's gonna tell people how to really go and brought these things. Is that what we're looking for? Or are you mad because people are actually sitting down listening to a person read? Children are listening to a person read and other folks are seeing it as well. And they're normally considered a human being. This is what he's dedicating time to on his show to divide. As we hear conservatives and Republicans always talking about, when are you guys gonna stop dividing this country? He took something like a reading hour and decided to find a way to, to, to break it down between women and men. Who some for some reason he thinks there's no men that think this is an okay thing for folks to do to acknowledge someone else's existence and allow them to maybe entertain in some ways or have an event where they're reading a damn book. How about an indictment on men? Men that listen to this guy who don't agree with this stupidity should say, he thinks I'm an idiot. He thinks I'm this barbaric, savage creature, and I'm just stupid. And that's all I can think of is attack, 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 attack. Can't see anyone else in my world unless I'm looking to attack them. Isn't that insulting to you? Is that how you go about your day every day? And if not, you should speak up and say, yeah, this guy doesn't speak for me.